All right, hey gamers, this is Joe from What I'm Playing Now. We're going to see if we can actually get all the streams set up here. I'm going to go try to go live on Facebook here in a second once this actually says that I can, and hopefully that is going to work. I should be streaming out to Twitch and YouTube right now, so hopefully that is working. And hopefully the audio is working as well. We're going to check that out here on our trusty tablet. And it is. All right. This is the first time I've streamed in several months. Probably about three or four, I think. Um, maybe even a little bit more. Hmm. And for some reason, Facebook doesn't seem to want to go live for us. And I'm not too sure why. Because everything looks like it's connected through Restream. Uh, unable to connect. Why was it unable to connect to Facebook? Well, that kind of sucks. All right, we're still going to go through with this. We're streaming out to Twitch and to YouTube. I guess that will work fine for today. Being Oh, hey, Adam, how you doing? It's the first time I've streamed in quite a while, so I got to get back into the back into the thick of it and try to practice back up. Kim and I are going to start doing videos again, I think, so Hey everybody, thanks for joining. Joe from What I'm Playing Now. We're going to forget Facebook for right now and just stick with what we have going on. We are going to play through, and I played through this a couple of times. I just checked that before. The stream, who hadn't streamed for, yep, it's been several months. Um, we're going to play through The Seventh Continent. Uh, this is a board game, kind of like a choose-your-own-adventure style board game. I've done a couple of streams of this before, and... I kind of wanted to get back into playing this game a little bit, so I figure why not just do a solo stream and actually see if we can actually get through one of the curses. I've played through a couple of times, like I said before. I've gotten close to um, finishing the curse, I think. I actually have some of the music. Um, somebody had created an app on the phone, so I actually have um, my Bluetooth speaker here on the other side. So we'll put that on for a little background noise and music. Um, the, the way the game works is you actually select a clue card that is going to have some information on there for you to start off. It actually has your starting location too. It also maybe gives you a little bit of information about what we're going to be doing. So there's a map on the other side. I'm taking this one a little bit more seriously in that I actually have my cartographer's notebook here. And we're actually going to be drawing this out as we're playing this as we're exploring the seventh continent here. So um, let's just go ahead and get started. Um, I'll jump over to the overhead view in a second after I read, um, kind of like what you're supposed to read before you start a new adventure. It says in the book, it's 1907, a renowned explorer. You have just come back from the first expedition on the seventh continent, a mysterious land that was recently discovered off the coast of Antarctica and probably the, one of the very last terra incognita in the world. You are recovering from your adventure when whilst reading the daily newspaper, you realize that several other members of the expedition have disappeared suddenly for unknown reasons. Coincidentally, you've been lethargic for the past few days, feeling feverish, kind of like how I feel right now doing my first stream in a couple of months, and finding it difficult to get up from bed. A cold shiver runs up and down your spine. You have to face the facts and evil is consuming you from within. At nightfall, you fall into restless sleep without knowing that for you, this is only the beginning. So that kind of sets the story for what we're going to be going through. I'm going to take the rule book and set it under my cartographer's notebook here. Hopefully we don't have to refer to the notebook too, too much. The, ver the voracious goddess. Let's read the clip. The idol that seems to be calling you has been haunting your nights. The piercing cries of a few seagulls pull you out of a deep slumber. They sound so strange as though they were laughing. You try your best to understand where on earth you are. How did you end up in this place? Your memories are clouded and you seem unable to remember. While well, sifting through your journal, you come across a handwritten sheet upon which something that looks like a route was drawn, along with several statues. As it so happens, one of the statues looks exactly like the idol from your restless dreams. You begin your adventure by putting the O10 card into play. Each player places their figure on it. Oh, Kim, does that mean the sound is not working? Oh. Okay, hopefully the hopefully it looks and sounds good because I checked it on the laptop and the sound sounded okay. 
Um, we're going to grab the 10 card here. We have to grab the first 10 card that's available. So this card says, Thick columns of yellowish smoke rise up from cracks in the volcanic rock to the east of... To the east, the peaks of a rocky cliff look down, mocking the ocean below. So we're going to put the O10 card here. Now the way this works is, we're going to switch to the overhead view here. Hopefully that go up. There we go. We're going to switch to the overhead view here. I have a deck of cards here, which are going to be um, my skill cards. Uh, oh, thanks, Kimmy, for letting me know that. It sounds good as well. I was hoping that the batteries had not died in the mic, and I didn't replace them. Um... This deck is essentially has um, the skill cards in there that we're going to be going through for the game. I have five of my cards in this adventure deck. There are also um, five curse cards in there. Curse cards are going to be cards that really just aren't utilized. They're kind of just more junk cards. They clog it up and they don't give you any sort of benefit when you're drawing cards from this deck. And this deck, when it runs out, I will be putting the cards face up in the discard pile here. And when this deck is completely in the discard pile face up, I then have to take the cards out of the discard pile, shuffle them up, put them face down in the discard pile. And every time I have to draw, any at any time at that point in time, I have to draw from this card and I draw a curse, um, I will, it will basically end the game for us. And that's how it's always ended for me before. I've actually never finished this first curse, which is one of, one of the reasons why I kind of wanted to start playing this game again because... Um, they're actually printing out the expansions for this, and hopefully those will be shipped in the next several months um, for those of us that had backed the Kickstarter. So this card is where I start. I put my character right here in the middle. I am playing as HP Lovecraft today. It is who I've played with before um, as my character. I looked at some of the cards. I was going to choose somebody different, but I figured, what the hell, let's stick with him since I've played with him before and I kind of really like playing with him. Um... I, I read through some of his cards and really liked some of his abilities. I don't know if I used his abilities to the fullest of his potential before. So I think we're going to give this a shot in and see what he can actually do for us today. So I think right here in the middle of our table on D4, um, we're going to draw that right here. We're going to put down card o, 010. I'm not really too sure how people are using the cartographer's notebook here, but we're going to go 010. Um, card here and then we'll see what we can put around this. Um, the way the card works is I can do a couple of different actions. There's a move action I can take to move to other cards that are surrounding this. There is an action over here that's going to let me, um, I have my little, it's going to be like an, or go see or investigate action. I have two gold number ones here which means I actually need to pull out these kind of like fog of war cards like you would see in other adventure style games maybe on the computer. I don't know what's there right now. So the way the game works is you're going to run into cards, and I really don't want to show one of those. I will pick a card from back here that I have not seen so I can show everybody kind of how this works. Even though I've probably done this in other videos, I don't know if those are up on the site right now. So whenever I want to do an action, I will do the white action, and I can look up on my handy-dandy sheet and look and see what that is. That is the Pathfinder Escape action. To succeed at this action... I need to basically draw um, zero or more skill cards, the way that plus is next to there, and I need zero stars. So the way the game works is you're going to be drawing through this deck of cards here, and you're trying to get stars on the cards that you're drawing to be able to succeed at the actions. Um, the Pathfind action that I kind of just showed you there is what is on these two cards as well. Let's go back and get rid of the big screen there and go back to the table. These two Pathfind actions um, don't really cost anything, so I think what we're going to do is, for the first one, we're going to... There it is. We'll start off going to the side here. Um, this could be one of many things. This could be an item that I would possibly get to put into my inventory. It could be a... Um, it could be some sort of event. It could be an event that, or it could be a piece of land that stays there, or an event that um, I might have to react to immediately. So let's see what happens, and we'll explain what it is. So this is actually something I need to interact with immediately. Um, I know that because there is a little hourglass in the upper right-hand corner. 
So you have an uneasy feeling that you are being followed. Backtracking is the only way to be sure. Um, the active player must perform one of the following actions alone. I could either do a, is it a scout action, a spot or observe action, or I can do a, is it a thinking action? I think that's what the brain is. I don't remember all these. Yes, think or compose myself. I remember some of these, but not all of them. There's, there's a sheet of about, um, I will show everybody what the sheet is. There's a sheet of about all those different actions that you're going to see on the cards. I don't even know if I've ever counted how many actions there are. Um, let's just say there's a crap load. Uh, so I have to do either one of those actions. I'm not paranoid. Uh, so I think what we might do is the act player must perform one of the actions alone. So I'm guessing either one of these that I do, it's going to be the same thing. I'm going to need to draw two cards and at least get one star. Uh, so I guess that's what we're going to do. Since we need to do this, we're going to go ahead and draw two. And I'm going to keep get to keep one of these. I actually got four stars. So the way it works when you draw the cards, I will look at the sides of the cards and I will add up the stars that I drew. If there is a half of star here, like on this card, I will try to find the matching half that is on another card here, but I drew uh, a crap load of stars here. And I think the card I'm going to keep is going to be the Dark Whispers card because when I have this card in my hand, the following effects are basically can, can happen. Um, whenever I do a think, a orientate, or a prey action, I think it is, the two hands together are a prey action, I get minus one to the skill cost and or a star and then a seven. That is extremely powerful and something I don't know if I was really doing previously um, when I was playing this game. Um, any card, I can keep one card per test whenever you're doing a skill test. I'm going to go ahead and, <clears throat> sorry, I'm going to go ahead and discard this other one to the discard pile. It goes over here face up um, since we're not to the end part of the game where we're playing with face down stuff yet. So I have Dark Whispers added to my hand now. Currently, since I'm playing a solo game, I could have four green cards, and green cards are usually cards that are good that you found along the way. I can have five skill cards, and the four dice are going to allow me to have four items that can have four cards deep within them. So I'm going to set my Dark Whispers card over here next to, um, right underneath HP Lovecraft, since that's kind of like my hand. I've never played with this cartographer's notebook before, so I don't know how this is going to work. Um, since I did succeed at um, my skill test there, I will read the white text here to actually see what gets to happen next. Here, there are footprints or animal tracks. Someone or something is on your heels. Take a 100 card or a 103 card if you are already paranoid. And I am not. So I'm not paranoid, so I don't take a 103, but I do get a 100 card, it looks like. And I think the 100 cards are usually, yep, bad things. I am paranoid now. Return this if there is no other character on your terrain card and on adjacent terrain cards. So this actually gets returned to the box. And we're going to take this 100 card and we're going to stick it to the back of the hundreds. I think all the all the hundreds might be paranoids. I'm not too sure about that one. Um, since this card is complete, this will go over here into the past pile and we will set that there. And what I then get to do is, since I just successfully kind of like completed this action and remove the fog of war that was there. I will put out the 009 card, which will actually show me 
another part of the continent. The ground is totally barren here. In fact, the only vegetation among your surroundings are clumps of red seaweed clinging to the rocks. Plumes of yellowish smoke spurt from the ground from time to time swirling around a dead seagull. So I will put this here like this. And then what we need to do is, again, put out more, kind of like our fog of war. We will grab a couple of more number ones. One will go here. One will go here. And since this is D1234, D1234, so where the heck do they have like five and six at? Is that only by like five by four, four by four when my mat's five by five? That kind of stinks. All right, I'm going to have to maybe think of another way to use this um, cartographer's notebook here because it is not matching up with my map. That could get to be tricky. So let's just say in 3D over here we have the 009 card. Here we have our starting point we're going to put down. Um, and I have a feeling I know what's to the one side of this. I believe it's kind of like a rocky cliff. I probably should maybe just write a little bit smaller in here. Um, but we'll kind of like figure out how we're going to do that as we're playing it. So I just revealed this card. Um, I have not moved there because I haven't done a move action yet. A move action actually costs one of the cards here. And I want to make sure I'm calling the cards by their right names. They are action cards. That's what they are. Action cards, and these are the exploration cards. So, I think what we're going to do is, before we do do any movement onto here, I think what we're going to do is we're going to flip this over, since it's basically a free, and we're going to see what's actually on here. So, let's see what we... Oh, and that is wrong, because that is a two card. How did I pull a two card? That should be a one card. I wonder if maybe the last time I played this, I got, I shuffled these all up, and I, there we go. Okay, these are all number ones. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that I had all the right cards. So, this number one card, Weaver Fish. Oh, this doesn't look good. Are we in? This is going to be another um, immediate event that I'm going to have to deal with. Um, a in the muck, and you just happen to see it at the very last second. Beware of stepping on its sharp, poisonous dorsal fin spine. Um, so this is basically allowing, having me do a do a spot or observe action. Uh, I need at least one star to be able to succeed at this. Uh, I don't really have anything in my hand that's going to give me a bonus to that. Um, although I do have a Serenity card. I can discard a card with the word Serenity from your hand to apply the following effect. Each revealed curse is worth a star. So I guess I could discard Dark Whispers if I draw a curse right now, and that would give me the star. I need one star. It's zero plus cards, so I could draw as many cards as I want, but you normally want to draw as few cards as possible, because like I said, once we go through this deck, um, it's, it's game over and we're dead. So I think what we're going to do is we're actually going to draw two cards, and then we're going to flip them over and see what we got. Okay, we got two stars and a Knowledge is Power card. I think we're going to keep the, the bow because I think getting a weapon this early in the game is something that would probably be very beneficial. The Knowledge is Power is going to get us more experience. I have never gotten to a point in the game where I've actually earned experience. So we're going to go ahead and discard this one and actually keep the bow, add it to my inventory. So now, when you're actually doing um, kind of like your turn sequence, and when you're doing like the tests, what you're supposed to do is, I'm trying to find it on the card here and actually see if I can just go through all the steps real quick just to make sure we're not missing anything. Action resolution. All characters involved may use their actions. I don't have any items, or may, um, may use their items. I don't have any items currently, because uh, the bow is actually still in my hand. I haven't crafted it. When it's crafted, I will put a die up here, which shows me how many 
how much usage it, usage it actually has. Um, the cost, you determine the cost of the X cards shown by the blue diamond. Um, usually it's skill to the, the gold star, what, what, uh, how much you have to have. Um, the minimum number of successes that you need. Uh, so you draw as many cards as the action cost. You can draw more unless if there is um, a kind of like a red lock on there, which means you can't draw more than the number that's on there. So if you have, if it shows the number two on there, you can't draw more than two cards. You result, you reveal the cards, you count up your successes, and then you basically read the success or failure spot on the box. Um, the skill, you actually get to choose one of the skill cards that you want to keep. You discard all other skill cards and any curse cards that were revealed. You then read your success or failure. Um, if it's more than one character involved in a failure, you're supposed to take uh, the 100 card, which I said as before, I believe that's the paranoid card. And then you need to look at your hand limit to make sure. So those are kind of like all of the actual action steps you're supposed to go through. I'm kind of not, since I played the game several times before, I kind of know kind of what I'm doing. So I'm not really going through all of those verbatim um, I will try to do those a couple of times just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Sometimes I do play this game a little fast, and I think I tend to do miss a few things. But since we actually drew um, two and a half stars, we got the two stars here on the bow. We were successful. By sheer miracle, you avoid getting stung. Uh, there's nothing else that really happens. This basically gets put into the past, and we draw out our next world card, which is the 007 card, which is going to go there. Been months since I played this game, and it's really actually kind of fun to be back playing this one again. Uh, further to the north, the terrain slopes steadily down to the water. So here we have what card is this one? This is 007. That is in um, 4E. 007. We kind of have. Um, A card that slopes down to water. Slopes down to water. So this is kind of like, oh, I thought it was a dead end card, but I guess it is not because there is another one card here. So let's pull that out and throw that up here. So see, just by taking several actions, doing some skill tests, I've already turned over two cards and now I pretty much have an idea of what is here. Um, I can move over here and possibly, oh, I have that upside down because I need to put all of my cards like this. There we go. And actually that means that does not go there. I was wondering why that card was there. I had that one upside down. It's kind of tricky playing the game upside down a little bit. So those match. Because that should be the 007 card. That should be the 10 card. So that's now correct. Um, I can do an action over here, which is the go see or investigate action. And I think that's what we're going to do next. I'm just going to move my guy over to here. It's not actually taking a move action to do that. You're just kind of seeing what is over there on that side of the continent. It looks like it's basically just drawing a card. And... Um, I don't need any stars. So this card I will actually get to keep if I want to. The other thing I kind of didn't mention is the game comes with this handy dandy um, magnifier. You want to pay attention to some of the cards, and I should probably do this because I can't remember which cards actually have them on there. There are some cards that could have numbers written on them, and it can actually replace the card that you have here with another card from the box that could have some different um, exploration items on there. It could possibly have some different resources on there. In this game, you can craft items at any time. So this bow, even though if I look at the bow card, it looks like um, wood and vine would give me a discount if it's actually on the spot I'm in. It doesn't need to, I don't need to be on a spot with those resources. Uh, that's kind of like one of the nice things about this game. You can craft anything at any time. Actually being on a spot with wood or vine would actually just decrease the skill cards that I need to draw. Um, 
to make it a little easier to succeed at because it's actually a zero star. So you're actually spending, you know, cards to just craft it and you want to try to get, you know, the cards as lower as, as low as possible um, to not burn through this deck as quickly. So I wanted to take a look real quick at this one as well, just to make sure there are no numbers here. And it looks like there's actually a statue on this one. Because I'm trying to remember what the different statues are on here. We'll have to remember that. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take, um, I didn't see any extra, any numbers on there, so I don't get to replace any of the cards. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, we're going to do this action here, which is, which we said was the ghost here investigate action. I'm going to need to draw a card. We did get a success. It is, um, a camouflage outfit. So I'm guessing it would give me some sort of maybe like some sort of benefit to, you know, defense. So that's something we're possibly going to have to craft here. Each of the items I have right now are going to cost me three cards to craft because each of them needs resources I, I really don't have. It looks like the resource we have is stone with us right now. And the camouflage outfit actually needs foliage or vines. And as we said, the bow needs wood or vines, of which we have none of, which is kind of a bummer. Um, so we succeeded at our action, and we now get to actually place out the 005 card. You stand before a nearly 50 foot high rocky path, a rocky peak. The view from up there must be quite interesting. So this is um, a climb action I would need to take. Um, and I'm not really too sure if I want to do that action without, without actually having maybe some sort of resource I have, like rope or something like that. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to do a move action. I think we're going to move on to this card here and explore this area down here because I really, oh, it's really, really kind of, I really don't remember what um, what is really down here. And this action isn't one of the, doesn't have an hourglass on here, so this is actually going to stay here until I actually do this action. And since this arrow here has this, um, that observe icon on there that I was, that I had just completed, or the go see or investigate action, I can't, okay, that's going to stay there until I actually take the action that's on there. Also, you don't have to move on to this card um, to actually complete that climb action. You can do that right from the card you're on. But I believe we are going to take a, and our hand limit, our hand, li hand, li hand limit is five as of right now. So... We're kind of good with cards right now. We only have three cards in our hand, but we're going to get another card in our hand right now to do our move action. So we're going to take our card. It's successful, so we go ahead and move to this one. And whenever you take your move action, you're basically taking the move action from the card that you're currently on, and you can move as many cards as you want. So since I just moved up here, if I want to move down here next, it would basically just be as long as my path is not obstructed with any other sort of challenge, that causes me to draw, to do a test. Uh, we're, we're good to move as many cards as we want to, to get, to go along the path there. So the remember card is when you're doing a think action, um, think or compose myself. I can choose one skill card in the discard pile and add it to your hand and then discard this. Interesting little card. Not too sure if we're going to need that or not, but we're going to set it here in our hand. tablet just a little bit over so I got a little bit more room here. I have my fire icon over here in case we get to build a fire which kind of lets you do um, free movement from that tile so 
We'll get to that when we get to that. All right, what do we want to do first? We have two different actions that we can do. We have a spot or observe action, or we have I wish they had these in alphabetical order or something, because sometimes finding these are just tricky as Sam Hell. Or the go see or investigate action, it looks like. So I can do an observe or go see and investigate. The observe action first. And it says it's zero cards you have to draw. So since my hand is just about full, I think we're actually, and it's zero stars, I think we're actually just going to say we succeed at this and draw the 011 card. Because to do this action up here, I'm going to need to um, actually draw a card, and that's going to fill up my hand. So right here, we're actually just going to take this as a free, as a free card. If there is a purple flag card under the satchel journal, with um, I, I have a purple flag card, which is the clue, but it actually isn't the icon I need. Um, you may apply the following effect instead of revealing this. You may return it and place it and take the card whose number is equal to 11 plus um, the purple card um, from the adventure deck. So there are cards that have kind of like these icons on them, these purple icons. Um, there could be purple or blue. And I do have a flag, like I said, on the clue card, but the icon does not match, so we don't get to do that. So we're going to just be keep this card. We don't get to replace it. A man is lying face down among the rocks. Approaching closer, you notice his clothes are torn and tattered and his body is swollen and puffy. Parts of the body are mutilated. The man's skin bulges with what would look like large eggs. I can do a... I can do a search or examine um, for a skill card, and then I would take a 31 and return this. I'm trying to remember when you examine. I think something bad happens when you examine him. I kind of want to say it's not a good thing to examine him because I think you get attacked by something. So I'm wondering if before we actually do the, the action to examine him, let's be a little smart about this. Let's actually construct our bow. We're going to burn through a couple of cards here, but I think this may pay off in the long run. So what we're going to do is do our bow. That's going to cost us three cards, and I have to spend those because I don't have anything that is really going to lower the cost of that, which kind of stinks. I really don't want to go through three cards right now, but we're going to have to. So I drew a club, but since we're craft, crafting a bow, I'm not really too sure I want to take on, take that. Rudimentary flint, I can actually craft um, a fire, which actually might not be bad, because I could always put the fire on here, uh, because it would actually be free. So I might take that. And then the other one is imaginary friend. It gives me bonuses um, and is one of HP Lovecraft's cards. I think I'm really going to possibly take this imaginary friend card and maybe try to get this crafted uh, because it basically lowers the cost of doing a couple of different um, skill checks, which I think might come into play later on in the game. I think utilizing his cards more than I have in the past might be the way to play this game a little bit better and a little bit more efficiently. So I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to take that card into our hand. Um, we succeeded at building the bow. It was really, we didn't need any stars, which is kind of a bummer. You're kind of just wasting that. And I needed to get take one of my dice, and I got the bone dice here from the actual Kickstarter. 
Um, so the bone dice actually kind of look look kind of like brown brown dice. Ooh, let me hold them on. There we go. A little harder maybe to see on camera, but I can see them pretty good here. Um, you can't, you guys can't even see them because I kind of have all my cards off there. I try to try to just focus on the mat um, for playing the game. So we got our bow craft in. So if we need a weapon, we actually have it now. So now let's actually do the search or examine action. I'm trying to see if I have anything in my hand that may assist with doing this action. I don't see anything in my hand that will. So we're going to go ahead and draw a skill card. We don't need any stars. Think. Randomly take up to seven cards from the action deck. You may add one card from, to your hand and must shuffle the other cards back into the action deck and or the discard pile. You choose for each card. Discard this. Interesting card there. So that's my fifth card. We now have a full hand of cards. Uh, so the next card that I take, I may be discarding a card from my hand to keep a card into my hand. Um, we succeeded at this check. So we need to get the 031 card now. The 031 card and the 11 one goes back into the deck here. There's 10, there's 11. 31. Oh, that's right. I got attacked by... See, that is why I built the weapon, because I thought that would happen. So, where we are, slope down to water, we're going to put that on 5E, which is off to the board. 5E, body, with monster. So we remember that. I thought something attacked you, but I wasn't 100% sure. I really wish I would have remembered a little bit more. As you lean down to search the corpse, a disgusting creature jumps out of the water and lunges at you. It does not seem to like the idea of you staying near its eggs. So I need to do an attack. The attack is actually, since I have a weapon, I have a bow, it is actually um, minus two. So, but the thing is, I need to get um, six stars right now to defeat this thing. So now here is the test. How many stars do I want to use for this? Because in my hand... I really don't have anything that's going to really give me any additional stars. If I use my bow, it's going to lower the cost. But at this point, um, and it gives me an additional star in the sevens. So I guess it's going to be worth it to actually. But now I need to figure out how many cards I'm going to take. I've already drawn several cards with multiple stars on there. I think I'm going to need to draw at least three cards to, to do this successfully. At least three, if not four. Um, to defeat this thing, because I really don't want a 104 card, because I have a feeling that that's going to be some sort of symptom that is going to actually occur to me. Uh, so I think we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and do. Do I do three or four? Because if I draw a seven, that'll give me a plus. I'm going to have to draw four because I need it. It's six pluses that I need. I need six successes. So I'm going to draw four cards. One, two, three, four. And one of these could be a curse card. No curse cards. But I got, I didn't, I don't think I got six successes. We got 
One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I do have six. Six because of my bow. I don't believe that that actually worked. We were successful at that. All right. So now I have four cards that I need to figure out which one I want to keep. I'm not going to keep the friction fire. The walking stick might not be bad because I believe it lowers your combat and your walking, which is which would be very very good. Um, that would save you some save you some movement costs. Um, wild imagination. This is another HP Lovecraft card. You may not take the following action unless there are experience points under the satchel journal card. You have learned from experience. All right, I think I'm actually going to keep the walking stick. I'm going to have to get rid of a card from my hand. I think we'll get rid of the think card. Because I can always pull a card back with a remember card. So there's my five cards that I'm keeping. We used one of our bows, which actually won us the card. So I defeated the creature. So I can take one 002 card and a 32 card from the adventure deck, if available, banish this, and take a 139 card. Take one 002 card. I don't remember. I don't know if I've ever defeated this thing before, so I don't know if I've actually ever gotten to take these cards before. So this should be kind of interesting here. I got an 002 card. I don't want to look at these yet. And a 32 card. I'm actually kind of stoked here that I actually completed that. That was... It didn't burn that many cards. Getting that bow that early in the game, I've never had a weapon that this early in the game. So there's our 32 card from the adventure deck, if available. Banish this and take a 139 card. Oh, I am hitting cards that I don't think I've ever seen before. All right. So let's do the 002 card first. Fish Mollusk. Randomly take four cards, five if you have the fire resource from the discard pile, and shuffle them back into the action deck. Okay, so this is... This is actually an item. So it, it has one use, and it's actually food. Food in this game is kind of cool because it actually lets you take your cards from discard pile back into your deck, lets you extend the game a little bit. That is a good thing. Um, I don't have the fire resource, but I can wait to use it when we get the fire resource. Um, although I threw out that one card that would have gotten me the fire resource. I don't know why I did that. You too. Now that the danger has passed, you search the body, wasting no time. Metal gear wheel. A small metal gear wheel found on the body of a naval officer. So we're going to actually notate that. That 5e body with monster. But the loot we can find is food and a gear. And what I mentioned earlier about the flags, some of the cards here can have a blue flag, um, as you can see. So since this card actually has uh, the satchel icon in the upper corner, this actually goes under our satchel card um, that we have set over here. So that goes there. So we actually found a gear wheel, which I think we can use later on. And then the 139 card, Judging by the insignias on his jacket, this man was once a French naval officer. Despite being worn and faded, you can still make out a name. FT-16 La Rochelle, probably the ship to which the man was assigned. Unfortunately, there is nothing else worthwhile on him. So this kind of just sits out here now. We've already done the action. It says we can't do it again because it's on there, and that's kind of like ends that part of that adventure. This card gets banished. So this card goes into our banished section here at back in the box. So we're going to put that card back there. I haven't gotten to banish you too many cards. Banished cards come back um, at the end of the game. Um, so that card could be shuffled back in, but we will never see it again. because.
So, what do we want to do next? we got to get over to this tile, I think, because I think we need to start exploring some of this world over here. So I got, um, I'm going to have to use some movement here because I don't have the fire or anything like that. Um, so we're going to have to basically dr draw a card and see what it is. This is Pan Pipes. I don't think we're going to keep this card because this is music um, for fire and thinking. Um, some of these without the resources are just costing way too much to be able to build them. And I'm going to be burning through that deck. Um, way too quickly. This is going to allow me to move. As I said before, I can move to um, any spot that is unobstructed. So that's what I kind of just did there. Let's get rid of our side view there. I keep forgetting to do that. At this point in time, we're going to go ahead and, and do our Pathfind or Escape. We're going to do Pathfind. We're going to start over here and see what we have over here on this side. There's a couple of different things we can do on well, there's one other thing we can do on this part of, part of the island, and that is spot or observe. There's some sort of red um, clay stuff over here. I can't remember what that does. There's so much of this game I don't remember because it's been so long since I played it. All right, here we have thinking ahead. This is an action I need to take immediately. You take some time to ponder your possible options going forward to survive in this hostile environment. Um, one character involved may discard one card with the keyword will from their hand or inventory in order to obtain a star during the result of the following action. The walking stick is will, and that's will, so I can get rid of one of those cards. Eureka, I've got it. One character involved may choose one card in the action deck or discard pile and add it to their hand. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So I have to take a, a thinking or compose myself action right now. I need one star, but I can actually discard a card with the keyword will from their hand. And in the bottom of each of the cards, um, I'll try to do a close up here. You'll see keywords like that one. It says will down here. Some will say serenity. Some says clothing stealth. Um, so there's different words that can be down there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and discard the Remember card and set that into there. That gives me the star that I actually need to succeed so I don't have to draw a card. Um, but it also lets me take a card from the discard pile and add it to my hand. So I could probably take that card back, but I don't think we're going to. I think we're going to take a different card back. I think what we're going to take back is going to be that rudimentary flint because what I'd like to do is put a fire into that spot um, so this way I can move back to this way for free uh, because you get to move to a fire spot for free. So we're going to take that card back into our hand. And then this card is going to go into the past. And then we'll be flipping over an 015 card in its place. So that card goes into the past. Let's grab our 015 card. All right. The terrain is split in two by a small bay. Okay, so this is one of the areas like I was talking about before where I would have to stop um, to actually and can't move through. There's actually a skill check here to actually move through this card and um, get through it. So we're going to go ahead and put this card out. And this is going into the 2D spot. This is going right here. This is card 015, and this card is the waves break and crash loudly against the jagged rocks. Getting to the other side is not going to be an easy task. 
this is a skill test to move. And I can't draw, so I'm writing more text into my boxes than pretty much anything. So this one is going to go right over here. I think we're going to ignore that for right now. I don't think we want to jump over to that. Um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to flip this over and actually see what we get here, and hopefully we get something good. Sea urchins. The ground is covered with hundreds of little reddish creatures that look like sea urchins. You will have to tiptoe through the colony if you want to continue this way. Each character getting involved in this action may discard any number of cards with the keyword skill from their hand and or inventory. For each card discarded this way, you get a star during the result step. So if we don't make it through this, we're going to get injured again. I don't think I have any keywords with skill actually in there. Um, and we need two stars to do this. This is a balance test. Um, I believe, because I believe that's what the teeter-totter is. That's what it looks like. Yes, balance or jump. And I don't think we have anything in our hand that actually lets us balance or jump as well. Um, I think one of the first things we're going to do, though, is actually... We're going to, before we do anything... Um, because this card actually is a card similar to this. It doesn't need to, um, it's not an immediate card. I think what we're going to do first before we do either of these, since they're both balance tests, um, we're actually going to do our flint. Uh, since I am on an area with stone, which is down here in the lower corner, that is actually the stone icon. It actually costs me zero cards to do a check here of this. And that will give me um, an item where I actually have move HP Lovecraft over. I'll put HP Lovecraft over here on the keyboard because we haven't had to type anything yet. That'll give me another item. So I have three items now in my inventory. I can have one more item. And what I need to do is start basically putting items underneath these cards because I can go four deep. What that'll do is when you use the item, it allows you to use any of the abilities on any of the cards. And if it actually has, if I put another will card under my bow here, which is will, it would actually let me add however many dice um, pips that it has on the bottom card to the top one. So if I put a card on here that has um, a die in the upper right-hand corner that has three pips on there, and I put that under my bow and it has the will and it matches the words, I would get to bump my bow up to six, um, which is something I don't think I've ever done before um, in some of my playthroughs, and something that you definitely, I think, need to do is start, try to start building those items up that you have there. Um, so I think what we're going to do is... We're going to take the action of using our flint, which is going to draw a card, and I need a star. Um, I don't think any of my cards give me any bonuses for the fire action. I don't know if I should draw one or two cards for this. I'm going to draw one and see what happens. I got a star. Thank goodness. So that is going to use up my flint since it only had, since it was a card that only had a die in the upper um, right hand corner that had one pip on there. It is basically used up and it is going to get discarded. And I actually get to put a fire figure into play. So we're going to do that. Now, what I could do is. When you're done with an item, do they go back into, do they go into the discard? Yeah, they go into the discard. They can't go back into the box because they're not green cards. 
All right. Um, I answered my own question. I think now what we're going to do, I don't think it's too early to basically, since I'm on the fire, to actually use the fish or mollusk card to take five cards from our discard pile and actually shuffle them back into the action deck. Um, I can use this. This card would go into the past um, because it's basically utilized. Oh, return. This one says return this. So this actually goes back into the box there. So what we're going to do is randomly take four cards. So I'm going to shuffle up my discard pile. And yes, I do have all of my cards sleeved. It did take me a good evening or so to do that. Um, and I have a box in my game room or my computer room in the other room on the other side of the house um, that has um, probably another 500 sleeves for all the expansions. Um, I bought those during the, um, from Mayday Games from their sleeves um, when they had their Mayday sale. Um, so that was actually a very good, good thing I did. Um, I get to pick five cards. One, two, three, four, five. We will turn these back face up. Oh man, it would have been nice to get that three star back. We're going to go ahead and randomly shuffle these back. And then we're going to give this deck a quick shuffle. And then our fish, can, fish and mollusk card will go away. Okay. Cards do shuffle very easily with those sleeves on as well. This was card 002 from killing that big squid monster earlier. Put this at the back of the O2s because there's quite a few. All right. So we've used up a couple of items there. We're back down to just having our bow as an item. I can craft a couple of more things like the walking stick, um, which a lot of people say is actually extremely useful. And the woven basket. When this item is in your inventory, the item is part of... The item it is part of may contain up to three additional item cards. Well, that's interesting. So that would actually extend that down to about seven cards since I'm playing a solo game, which is kind of flipping crazy. Um, I may craft a walking stick here. I can't remember if there's wood down to the south that I might find. Um, but I think we're gonna go we're gonna go to that southern direction. Um, I'm not gonna go off to this side. I think south is where where we're headed. So, don't think we've done our observe action yet up here. So I think we might do that. We might do that first. Let's craft the walking stick real quick, just to get that out of my hand so the next card I draw I can keep. Um, cause I don't, I don't think there's any wood that I run across. I'm going to have to draw two cards cause we don't have any wood. I have snowshoes and dark regeneration. We're crafting the walking stick. We're going to put a four on there. I didn't need anything for successes. It basically just cost two to, to do that. The following effect applies as long as you have this in hand. If at least one curse card is revealed during the result step of an action you are involved in, you may return your freezing, frightened, hungry, nauseated, or tired state. Oh, let's keep that. That is definitely a good thing to have in, in hand. All right. We have our walking stick. Let's do an observe action, which is our 34, which is basically going to cost us a card. And it's the pan pipes that we did earlier. It, we didn't need any successes. We're just going to go ahead and discard the pan pipes and pull card 34 out. 
And you want to watch when you're drawing these cards because sometimes there are multiple of... So what I'm looking for in the boxes, I'm looking for card 34 there. And sometimes there's multiple cards. So there's like multiple twos, there's multiple, you know, tens, you know, and stuff like that. And um, some cards there is only one of. Um, I, 34, it looked like there might have only been 134. So you tear a piece of seaweed and it and give it a taste. As soon as your tongue starts to tingle, you spit it out immediately. However, it's flexible and strong. Stem might prove useful. Immediately after this is revealed, take a 029 from the adventure deck if available. Well, it should be because I don't think we've used any of these cards before. So let's take our 029 card. Bright red seaweed is cl clinging tightly to the rock. Perhaps it is edible. 29, red seaweed. I don't remember having this before because this is going to go under our um, satchel as well. The stem of this red seaweed is both flexible and strong. It could easily be crafted into something nice, into some nice cordage or as a component in other equipment. When this seaweed can be seen on your terrain card, you have the vine resource. Interesting. Interesting. So let's actually notate that. That is on three D seaweed. O thirty four observe. So we know how the vine resource. We can actually build a couple of these items we have for cheaper since we're here. And I don't remember that. Immediately take the O29 card from the adventure deck if available. Okay. Yep. So this is going to go into the past. Because that doesn't stay out. And so now that we have the vine available, since we're here on this tile, I have two things in my hand that actually need vine. I have the camouflage outfit which might be kind of interesting. And then I have this other one. I think I'm going to build, craft the camouflage outfit just to free up a card in my hand and to get another card out. And it's a clothing stealth. Problem is, that doesn't match any of the items I have over on here, so I may use it as its own card. So with the vine resource, I actually, it's gonna cost me one less, so it's gonna cost me two to craft this. And I don't have anything else that will let me, that helps me with that. It doesn't look like it, so it's gonna cost us two. There's no Successes that we need, zero success. But we got the Remember card back into our hand. And we're going to put out Knowledge as Power. So I'm not worried about getting more experience right now, although watch me kind of wish I had later on in the game. It would have been nice to have gotten some rope or something to be able to climb this cliff back there to see what was back there. It would have been nice to backtrack a little bit. Because uh, we're still basically at a conundrum here of we need to pass these one of these tests to get past um, either of these items here. One being the sea urchin, the other being um, this this test between this rocky water. And I think we're going to go the sea urchin route and go south right now.
So each character getting involved in the following action may discard any number of cards with the skill word with the keyword skill. And I do have. I thought I had something with this keyword skill in it. I have will, will, will. I'm going to discard a skill. With the keyword skill from their hand and or inventory. Clothing, stealth, will, will. Mm. I have no skill. I have no skill. Oh, well. Um, this way you get that. So I have to draw at least one card. I need two stars. So I think I need to draw at least two cards here. It doesn't look like I have anything else because I don't know. And I can't believe you can't use the walking stick for the balance action. Why is the walking stick just usable for walking, moving and backtracking, or, or fighting? I really wish that the walking stick would help me with the damn balance or jump action, but it doesn't look like it's going to. We're going to draw two cards. Two cards sound good? I think two cards will do it. We only need, we need two stars. So that's a star on each card. I wonder if we should draw three. Let's draw two. Oh, we got our first curse. So what can we do here? During the result step of an action you are involved in, this is HP Lovecraft special ability. Um, I can discard a card with the keyword Serenity. From your hand to your inventory in order to apply the following effect. Each curse revealed is worth one star. Um, remember that we just drew is a Serenity card. We are going to discard the Serenity or discard the... Um, remember to add a star in... Because the shovel that we just drew is one star. That will give us two stars because we drew a curse. The curse gets discarded into the discard pile. And we actually just succeeded at that. And we gave ourselves a shovel, which we can build, which is going to be definitely beneficial. Because uh, we are on a spot with stone. We are going to be building that shovel definitely. Um, definitely building the shovel. I think that will help out. Um, so, but we succeeded at the sea urchins. And you make your way through this unharmed. Discard this card. Yes, Stewie. So, this card gets discarded um, into the past. And we now get to pull out card 006. There is no smoke here, some moss, and even a few bamboo-like canes grow in this area. Huh. Interesting. Alright, so this card's going to go here. This is card... That's going to go in for... C? For C, this is card 006. We got some... Bamboo, moss, and we'll see what else we find there because we put out another one fog of war card right over here. So that's going to go there. Oh, nope, these are moved over. That goes there, and that goes there. There we go. So that was in three. Three C. I wrote that in the wrong place. Three C. Gotta move that over. That was O six. Bamboo. Moss. All right. All right. We can move down there. I don't think we're going to go over to the east. I think we're probably going to go down to the south if we do go anywhere. But I am on an area with shovel with um with stone, so I think right now we 
when you're crafting something, is it the spot you're on and adjacent spots that you get the bonus from? Because there's bamboo down on that spot. Let me look that up real quick. I can't remember. I might get to use both of those. Exploring the continent, moving to another terrain, crafting an item. The items you can craft are made of resources while these on your terrain card or on a permanent event attached to it. You may reduce the number of cards drawn. Craft action. available on this terrain to the call. Okay, so no. So that's that's an actual separate card. So I don't get to do that. Because the way it reads is the items you can craft are made of resources. Well, these resources are available on your terrain card or on a permanent event attached to it. So bamboo is on a separate terrain card not on my terrain card. So I will not get to use both of those. I just wanted to verify that real quick. I couldn't remember. So I think we're gonna craft the shovel here real quick. Since we're on the stone and it's minus two, so I only take one card to craft the stone. And it has four uses. Let's put that on the four. Draw the, ooh, I found the raft. Oh boy, I don't know if I've ever found the raft before in the game to where I could actually use it to sail somewhere. Because I know I've, I've actually tried to, I might have before, because I might have sailed one place, one place before. Um... Okay, so that was our craft. I think right now what we're going to do is we're going to do a move. Um, we're going to use our walking stick because it's kind of just sitting here doing nothing. We're going to save ourselves a card. The walking stick saves us minus two to move. If you move to a train card where there is an explorer or fire, it's minus one move. Okay, I'm moving off of that. So from there, we're actually, what we're going to do is we're going to look at this card here. And this is lunch. A plump seagull is hopping around just a few yards from you. If you are a vegetarian, just ignore it. Um, this is an action where I draw one card and it's a combat. Um, I'm going to use my bow because it's actually going to allow me to draw one less card and... Give me an instant star. So we're going to take our bow down to two. We're going to go ahead and draw. I'm doing. I'm doing that action. Do I have anything else that gives me anything for the hunt action? I don't think so. I do not. Okay, I got a star, and my bow gives me a star and a seven. So with two stars, we actually got it. Learn by doing. You may discard this card during the cost step of an action you are involved in in order to apply the following effect, minus three. Wow. That would actually come in handy to build the raft and possibly put it under one of these. Craft skill. Oh. Man, it wouldn't add up to anything. I'd probably have to put it over here on the shovel. But I think we might do that. I think we're going to get rid of the woven basket and get keep this learned by doing. Um, because I could possibly move back to where the fire is for free to actually craft the raft for essentially free. Which, is, which would be amazing. Um... So we actually defeated this, and we get a 001 card, then banish it. So let's draw the first.
for a 001 card. We got some meat crustacean. Um, oh no, it's an item, and I have no room left on my items. <laughs> um, I think what we're going to do is this. This is going to give me six cards. So we're going to discard one of our items. And we're going to get rid of the camouflage outfit. Man, that was a waste doing that. We're going to have to just discard that because I am not passing up putting six cards back into my deck um, as I know how tight this game gets. Anytime you can get food in this game, you utilize it and you take it to your advantage. Um, so we hunted, we banished this card. And we're going to bring out the 004 card now. Progression in this direction is hampered by many jets of boiling steam. It seems you have to take a steep path to reach the ocean that you can see below. Alright, so this is going to be in 4C. 4C. is what we which is just written in before is zero zero four stone path down to C. So I wonder now if we want to go back to this other area and actually build our raft. So I think what we should do is, before we do anything else, I could probably do that ob observer look action on the 012 while we're here. Let's do that. It's gonna cost us one card. Oh, uh, you know what, let's wait to do that. Cause let's get rid of a couple of these cards from our hand. Um, if you move to a terrain card where there is an explorer or fire, it's minus one movement, so that's going to be a free action for us there. While I'm at the fire, I can randomly take six cards. I'm going to use my meat crustacean and utilize this card here because we're by fire. I'm going to take six cards randomly from the discard pile and shuffle them back into the action deck. It would be nice to leave that curse in the discard pile. Give these a good shuffle up. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you can look through your discard pile, and the curse is going to go back into our adventure deck. Damn. That's kind of a bummer. It would have been nice to not have that. This is one of the reasons why I sleep these cards because of how much you are shuffling this blue deck of cards. If you're going to sleeve anything, I would definitely suggest sleeving this. Um, probably the cards that are going to get shuffled the most, I think, out of out of everything. And the one thing we really haven't been looking for since we pulled out some of these other cards is to see if there's numbers on these cards with our little magnifying glass. I just noticed my magnifying glass here. Okay. And then return this. So this goes back into into the box. So we'll put this and there are a lot of 001 cards. How you get to the gold 001, I have no idea. Um, but I think let's actually look at some of these cards here for the magnifying glass to see if we see any numbers. I see footprints on this one. Oh! See, there isn't. I knew there was a number on one of these cards. There is an 014. Now, when you see that, do you have to be on that card? Or can you replace it just by being next to it? Where did they actually talk about that? It was under the exploring. The continent. Spotting a handing number. When players find one, they may discard the card on which they spotted the card and replace it with the card bearing that number. 
So let's go ahead and do that. Let's actually write here that 006 has, broke my lead, has hidden 014 on it. So I believe it said we can put that back in the box and take the other one. I just want to make sure I'm doing this right because it's been a while since I actually found one of those. Um, players find when they may discard the card on which they spotted it and replace it with the card bearing that number. So we're going to find the 014 card and it's right there then we will discard that card into the past you frighten a little crab and it scurries into a small hole hidden among the weeds so this could possibly get us more food come on out lead Crab and weeds. We'll put a slash there and put 014 there. So one way to tell you're actually, when you see one of these numbers and you're doing it correctly, the card I had pulled originally was 006. That's what I was told to pull. On the card, there is a very small printing of 014 right by my finger. Not too sure if the camera is going to pick that up or not. But when you pull the 014 card, the one thing you should see is a thumbs up that shows you the card you're coming from. So 006 thumbs up. The 006 card is what I had. I know I actually did not make a mistake there and we pulled the right card. So this card's going to go into play there. And let's actually search this one. I think that was one of the only numbers I had actually found um, while playing this game so far. Looks like there's more red seaweed on this card on some of these cliffs here. So I'm guessing any place I see that, I can actually have that icon. Oh, wow, and that's stone and that. I think I missed that in earlier playthroughs of this in that there is also seaweed... and stone is there. That gives me vine and stone. I need wood though for some of the stuff. All right. So I'd actually move back here to actually build the raft or build it, but I think down there or actually down here I could actually have all along that coast, all along those cards, it looks like there's um, vine. That's really interesting to know. I had not caught that in previous playthroughs, that the red on all of these cards, and by the red, they have this red kind of like down here, um, where my middle finger is right there, which you can see. That is actually the seaweed along there. And with that card that I found, that red seaweed, when this seaweed can be seen on your terrain card, I have the vine resource. I don't know if I ever had that previously in other games, which is kind of cool to have right now. All right, so I think what we're going to do is, since we are on this, we got our food, we got those cards back into the deck, we're going to um, build a raft because I don't have any wood. So it's going to cost me um, three or two less because of the seaweed. I have learned by doing this, which is going to cost me three less. We're going to discard that to actually craft the raft for free, which has four uses. Um,
think what we're going to do is we're going to do the move action, so it's going to cost me one. And we're going to move down to this card here. Oh, and I got a curse, but it really doesn't matter because there's no failure that is just going to get discarded. So, still doing okay. Somehow we have a great inventory of items. I have three of HP Lovecraft's cards in my hand. And I have a raft to actually sail somewhere if I want to. So I think one of the first things we're going to... Oh, you know what I should have done is I should have stopped on that other card to actually search some of those things and maybe get some more food, but I don't have really any room um, for those things. So let's maybe see what we have around here. Let's maybe do the observe action. Let's do the spot or observe action, um, which doesn't cost me anything, and it's just card 035. I don't think I'm going to draw a card, even though I only have three in my hand. Um, but we are going to take card 35. You find a moss carpeted hovel where you can get some rest and comfort away from the elements. Huh. Immediately after this is revealed, one character may choose one card with the keyword stamina in the discard pile add it to their hand, or shuffle it back into the action deck. So that's kind of like a permanent event that is kind of like tied there. That's interesting. I don't think I ever saw that before. Immediately after this is revealed, one character may choose one card with the keyword stamina in the discard pile and add it to their hand or shuffle it back. So let's find a card with the keyword. Let's see if we have a card with the keyword stamina here. Oh, learn by doing, minus three. We're just going to put that one right back into our hand, I think. Wow. The seventh continent has never been so kind to me in all previous playthroughs. We could do a rest action or a heal action, but I really don't have anything that's going to need me to do that. So I think we're going to look at the go see or investigate. This is going to cost us a card. It's zero stars. Knowledge is power. So we're going to go ahead and keep that since we actually have five cards in our hand now, um, and that is going to be card 008. So let's actually make note of Seaweed and Stone. Um, what card actually is this? That's C4. C4 down to C. Um, 035 is rest slash free card. So we make note of that. I'm trying to make notes of all this stuff so I actually remember these things when I come back to the game. Uh, you gaze upon the wide, endless ocean. The surf is rough and choppy, and the salty spray from the waves is enough to tell you that the water is freezing. Swimming away will certainly... Uh, not be easy. On the other hand, if you stay here for more than a few days, you will likely die. Um, this is an actual um, kind of like action with that that I can use the raft with. This is a swim action, if I believe I remember that correctly. Where is the anchor? The anchor is swim or sail. Um, my raft is going to give me two plus a seven, 
but I need nine stars. And I don't know if I have anything else that's going to give me a whole hell of a lot of stars in here. Getting nine stars is going to be difficult. Um, but if you do that, you get the flag, an O23 flag, and the raft actually has a plus five on there, so I would get to do O28, which I don't know if I've ever done before. Oh, man, I wanted to go back here and get this food as well. I think what we might do is go back and try to search that O16 and see if there's actual food there. Um, because I, I, I think we're going to have to try to just draw a crap load of cards here to see if we can use our use the boat to succeed, which is going to be tricky. I'm going to use the walking stick and take it down to two for our free movement back to here. We're going to do the spot, the search or examine for free on 016, because I don't think we had done that before. There is something in there. Following the scampering crab, you notice a gleam at the entrance to the hole. You crouch down and reach into a hole to take the object. Another metal gear wheel. Oh, wow. So on C3, we also find... Gear wheel... Gear wheel in 016. So we got another gear wheel. We have two gear wheels now. I don't know if I've ever had both. Um, I think I can do the search or observe action again for 016. Because uh, you could do these multiple times until they kind of tell you to stop because the next one is a gold card. You insert your arm into the hole again but find nothing worthwhile. You notice that the ground around the tunnel is loose and crumbling. You could easily dig out and hide in there. So this actually is a permanent card that stays there. So the island is finally coming together. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to maybe do the 012 action again down here, which is the observe action, the spotter observe action. That's going to cost us a card. But it's, oh, another learn by doing. Well, we're going to get rid of this knowledge by power because two learn by doing cards is definitely going to save us some actions later on. That's 12. Okay. From the few trucks or from the few tracks you spot on the ground, it seems that a small animal was recently here. You hide and wait in silence. Depending on the number of successes you obtain, if I take a hunt action, I can obtain the following cards, which is probably going to be food. And the only thing that's going to do hunt for me is that. So this is going to stay here. But I think we may do that hunt action, I think, right now while we're here. We're going to use our bow and take the bow down to one. That's going to make this free. It's going to give us one star and then a seven. I don't have anything else that's going to give me anything with a hunt. So it all depends on how many cards I want to draw here, probably how much food we're going to get. Um, I think we're going to draw two cards. 
and we got two stars. So that's going to be a total of three stars because there were no sevens there. And three stars per this card. Oh, oh yeah, you can only draw two cards. I'm glad I did that. I didn't notice that at first because it has a red lock on there. So luckily I drew the two cards. And I need two plus stars. I got three stars. I get one O30 card. Reveal them. If at least one involved character is bloody, you must discard one of these cards without the keyword predator. Choose one of the remaining cards, which represents the result of your hunt. Return the other cards. All right. Um, so I need a 30 card. This is some of the most I've explored of this island. A strange cephalopod. Lovely. This is not what I was kind of hoping for. That's a 30. All right. So let's finish this up before we do this. Um, we're going to discard this. Uh, do I want to keep the dark side? The following effect applies as long as you have in hand. During the consequence of the action is a success, you may take all the curse cards in the discard pile and shuffle them back into the action deck. Wow. I think we're going to have to keep that. I think what we might do is get... Oh, man, I really don't want to get rid of one of these learn by doings, but his cards are actually really good, I think, this game. All right. Um, so I think before I actually pull out the next card, I think I actually need to, since this is an... Uh, event that needs to happen immediately. A three foot long creature with tentacles and stumpy legs tries to bite me. So we need to go into combat. So I think we're going to use our bow one last time. Because that's going to give us a star. Um, I could actually use my bow and my walking stick. Although the walking stick really doesn't give me any stars. It's just going to lower the cost of something. So we're going to use the bow because that gives me the star and the seven. Um, I can only draw one card. And I got a star. So my bow is actually used up. So my bow is going to get discarded here. But we successfully killed the creature. The card that I drew was examine the notes. How about taking a few moments to study the notes you and your companions took during your previous expedition. I could take two 50 cards, keep one, and return the other. That would be really nice to do. I think what I might do is get rid of the imaginary friend, which is his item, and discard that. Maybe we can hopefully get that back at a later time. I really don't see a need for that item right now. We have other cards that are helping us. And I think pulling that 050 cards, those 050 cards might kind of be interesting. One, two, three, four, five. I have five cards in my hand. We just defeated this thing. I killed a little critter. I get a 002 card as a reward. Where is a 002 card? There is a 002 card. Fish Mollusk. More food. So, this card is going to get discarded. Because that's that. Um, I now pull out the 012 card which I think is going to be the gold 012 card, which I don't think I've ever seen before. Apparently there is not much more food in this desolate land than you have already found. You realize you had better ration what you have if you want to make it through. Immediately after this is revealed, one character may discard two cards from their hand in order to choose one card from the discard pile and add it to their hand. So I'm not going to do that. We're going to put that card back out there. That's a permanent um, card there. This card is going to get discarded because we went through that. And I think what I might do is actually use my walking stick to move back to the fire, but it's free, actually, now that I think about it, to move back to there. We're going to do that. We're going to move back to here for free because of the fire. I'm going to use my fish right now and actually get my food. So this actually goes back into the box, and I get five because of the fire.
So I've explored a lot of this territory so far, and it's looking like I haven't really utilized, used a lot of cards here. One, two, three, four, five. Did I get, oh, I didn't get his imaginary friend back. But the curse actually did stay in there. So that's kind of a good thing. So let's take these five cards back and actually shuffle them back into the deck here. All right. Man, this is so far the best I've done exploring this. I've made it to a couple other parts of the island before, but I've never explored actually these, this part of the island, this, in this much detail, which is actually kind of cool. I actually feel like I've accomplished something today. And we're going to have to save the game here shortly, I think, because it is well past my dinner time. But I still want to do maybe one, one more thing. I would love to climb that rock, but I don't even think we're going to attempt to do that. All right. Let's see what we got going on here. Where do we want to go next? I really didn't finish exploring that 018 area. Kind of half tempted to go back up there and see what's there. What is that? 4E? 4E. Oh, what to do, what to do, what to do. I really want to try the ship and see if we can sail off the island. I think since we've gotten most of the food, I think that may be the thing to do. I wonder if I should spend my walking stick to move up here, explore that, then move my walking stick to move down here and see if we can maybe try to sail off the island. Let's do that. We're going to do that. I'm going to use the walking stick once for basically a free movement up to here. We're going to pull a card for the 018, Knowledge is Power. We're just going to discard that one because I have... Way too good of a hand with all of HP Lovecraft's card in my hand. Um, and we're going to look for the 18 card. Oh, it's a green card. You have reached the northern end of the island. You have no idea how much time it would take to reach an area with more abundant resources. But one thing is certain, if you stay on this barren slab of rock, you are bound to starve. The many reefs that surround the island would surely wreck any craft to approach or leave. However, you might be able to swim through them. The sea is calm right now, but this is not a time to be reckless. So this is the swim action. Um, and I think from this one, I think I actually tried to do that before in a previous playthrough. I think it was a no-no. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to use the walking stick one last time um, to move back down to this area over here. Because I have nothing impeding my path. I can go right down there, and our walking stick is consumed, and we'll get put away. We now have two dice left for to craft items in our inventory, but I think what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to use the raft, um, because we do have this sail action over here, which I don't know if I've ever tried or if I have ever succeeded at before. But with the raft and the card I'm going to get to pull, this could be very interesting. I can draw three cards. I need nine stars. I'm going to drop my raft down to a three. Oh, the fish mollusks. This should have gotten put back away. This is an 002. Let me put my fish back in the box here. I forgot to do that. We'll put him at the back of the twos. All right. I need nine successes. The raft gives me two plus the seven. So any sevens I draw will be successes as well. But nine is crazy. I mean, so I'm going to need seven 
I'm thinking about just drawing six cards since I've actually been doing so good. Just, just for the hell of it. Just drawing six cards. Because I don't want to fail at this. I don't have anything else that's going to allow me to do the, the swim action. I didn't craft anything else. Three, four, five, six. This is costly, but I think it's going to be worth it. So I have two stars. There's no star there. There's two stars. So there's four stars, a curse. Five stars, six stars. I need three more between these two cards. One and one. I think I was one short. So we have, two, and there were no sevens, seriously? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I am one short because I drew the curse card. But, 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 if I discard a card with the keyword Serenity in it, HP Lovecraft's special ability is to turn a curse card into a star. So I need to get rid of a Serenity card, and that's one of his cards. So let me look at these real quick. Which one? I have two that have Serenity in them. The following effect apply as long as you have this card in hand. If at least one is revealed, this one stops negative effects. The following effect applies as long as you have. This one is for doing different um, skill checks. It's minus one and gives you a star and a seven. I think I'm going to keep that over returning the the different state cards that just turned this curse into a star which gave me nine stars which is a success since i used my raft the flag on here the card that i'm going to get to pull is says 23 i have plus five on the matching flag i get to pull card 28 to see where this takes us and i definitely don't think i've ever done this before card 28 all right, here we go. You launch the craft and pull away from the islet. After navigating for many hours, you are finally able to make out the wild coast of the seventh continent ahead on the horizon. All right, so this is an immediate test that we have to take. I can take two zero zero two zero zero three cards, return all the cards on the board and in the past. Put a 125 card into play. Each player places their figure onto it. So I think we're moving to a different part of the island. What part of the island on the Voracious Goddess? I'm not too sure. Um, but let's get our two 003 cards real quick. Two 003 cards. A memory from your previous expedition comes to mind. Jimmy, the military demolition specialist kept repeating if a stupid rock is stopping ya y'all get rid of it faster with dynamite than with a pickaxe i got an experience point this goes under my satchel an event from your previous expedition comes to mind your team once spent a whole day making a stretcher to carry emily z as a matter of fact the closest trees were over three miles away from where he had broken his leg oh emil not emily emil I apologize, Emil, for saying your name wrong. Another experience point. So we got two experience points for doing this. Now, we return all the cards on the board to the past. So let's actually figure out what we're going to do here because the curse is going to go away. I get to keep one of these cards. Um, woven cord. Yeah, now I draw a woven cord. Put a fire figure into play. That costs two friction fire, wood, stone, camouflage outfit, valiant heart. You may discard this card the result during the result step of an action you're involved in in order to apply the following effect. Two stars and take a one-on-one -on -one card. Really torn. Do I take fire since I'm moving to a new part of the island, which is going to definitely come in handy? Or do I take the valiant heart card? which is going to give me two stars, but maybe take a one-on-one -on -one card. And I can't remember if a one-on-one -on -one card is a negative effect. I think it might be a state card 
which could possibly be some sort of negative effect. I can't remember. Um, but man, oh, I got to keep one of these. So the friction needs wood, the woven cord needs stone. Oh man. I, I not having the stars I think is way more negative than than the fire for right now. Hopefully we'll get some more fire um, abilities later on. So we're going to keep the valiant hearts shall not fail. So now this card was completed because it was our sailing card. That's going to go into the past. This card, after navigating, return all the cards on the board and in the past. Put a 125 card into play. So basically what happens is my fire comes off the board. It sounds like from where we were, which I want to notate, C4... Where is my C4 at? There's C. There's my 4. Now there's C. Sailed off to. What are we sailing off to? 125. So, my whole board's wiped right now. And I think this is probably where we're going to save the game. Because I need to go eat some dinner. So, But we're going to see what this 125 card is. I have to at least see that before we end today's stream. I'm going to try to start doing a stream on Saturdays. I don't know what time I'm going to start. Um, I started a little later today. I'd like to start earlier in the afternoon for my stream, but hopefully what I want to do is play this game for the next several weeks um, on Saturday. Maybe do a weekday stream. Not too sure if that's going to happen or not with my work schedule. Um, so I actually want to see if I can finish one of these damn curses before the next... Uh, expansions come out for this game. I have to at least finish one curse before some of the expansions come. So 125 card. This islet is narrow and uncomfortable apart from a few patches of red seaweed. Oh, well, we know where we're landing. That's kind of cool. The only types of plant in this sandy soil is short sickly weed. So here we go. We are on a whole different part of the island now. So I wonder if I can tell from where we just damn sailed to. But we actually have stone and seaweed here since we have that other card under our thing still. So we're still sitting, I think, pretty good even after drawing all those cards and sailing off the island. Hopefully we can find some food on this part of the island um, to actually extend our um, search some. But I feel like I'm actually going in the right direction finally. trying to look on the little map here that they give you as to where I might be on on this part of the island. But let's go ahead and plop this down. This is card 125. We're going to put our figure on there. We're going to have two fogs of war. And I don't think I'm actually going to go any further than this. I don't want to put down the fogs of war and start getting into it because I definitely won't stop and it's already 730. And I was trying to give myself a 7 o'clock stop time um, for this. But hey, uh, if you're watching, thank you for joining. Um, definitely subscribe to our Twitch channel, um, what I'm playing now. Um, hopefully I'm going to be able to do a podcast tomorrow. Uh, I did get some gaming in this week. Um, Kim and I got a new game sent to us from Brotherwise Games. Um, their new Kickstarter that was just shipped. We're going to be doing a video for that hopefully within the next week uh, once we learn how to play that and get a couple plays of that under our belt. Um, hopefully the podcast, I will probably be talking about a few games I played this week. And um, other than that, thank you for joining me. Uh, I think that's going to be it for this playthrough. Again, like I said, subscribe, subscribe to the channel or you know, follow us here on Twitch. I'm going to try to do these on Saturday, sometimes Saturday afternoon. I'm, I'm thinking maybe a start time of around 1 o'clock is what I may shoot for. And what I'd like to do is maybe play this for the next um, three weeks um, after this to actually see if we can maybe get through one curse, if not maybe a couple. If I can get through... The first curse, and I'm in the middle of the second one, maybe we'll extend this. What I'm thinking of doing is maybe concentrating on one game for about a month's time where I'm playing it continually throughout the month solo. Um, I have several games that I want to get to the table. I have this. I wouldn't mind getting Sword and Sorcery to the table. 
getting a little bit of that played. I wouldn't mind getting a little bit too many bones to the table. I've played that a little bit. Uh, so there's a couple of solo games that I have um, in my library that I want to start doing playthroughs of and, and concentrating on them for more than just one session. Uh, kind of like the people are doing with all the video games that are on Twitch. You know, where people are playing the same game daily, daily for eight hours a day. I'd kind of like to do that with a board game and actually just keep revisiting it and seeing, um, especially the solo games, especially these, um, I don't want to call them legacy style games, you know, these these games that actually are evolving and telling a story, you know, like this choose your own adventure style game and, you know, sword and sorcery where you're playing through different campaigns. So, you know, like the campaign style games is kind of what I'm kind of shooting to forward to play here. And I had this idea a while ago that I wanted to do this and with work and everything, I didn't get a chance. Um, but hopefully now, since we got this first one under our belt, and this is the first stream I've done in probably about three or four months, uh, I think I'm actually back into the swing of things. I'll have to look in to see why I wasn't able to stream out to Facebook um, and get that fixed. But other than that, hey, everybody, thank you for joining me. Uh, hit the website, whatimplayingnow.com. YouTube, Twitch is whatimplayingnow.com. Twitter, Instagram is whatimplayingnow.com, or what I'm playing now, but drop the G. And other than that, everybody, thanks for joining me. Uh, I will be back. Like I said, I might try to do a midweek stream if I get a chance to. If not, I will be back next Saturday for sure. Uh, we'll see how the schedule goes. But thanks for joining me, everybody, and we will catch you later.